All right, so you're looking to do your first laser project, and we're actually going to put together a little keychain fob just like this um, together. First thing to notice about Inkscape is that on the left-hand side are all the different tools that you're going to use to create the different objects that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and start with a rectangle. It looks exactly like a rectangle tool. And you may notice at the top bar that the things have changed. So whenever you activate a new tool, different stuff's going to show up on that top bar. So to draw a rectangle, I'm just going to click and drag. And there's a rectangle. And yours might look completely different from mine. And that's OK. It might be filled in. It might have rounded corners. It might be invisible. Uh, making invisible objects is kind of a rite of passage in Inkscape. So just get ready for that. It's going to happen at some point. And then I'm going to zoom in by holding control and using the scroll wheel. You can also go to view, zoom, and zoom to drawing to zoom in to whatever you've put on the page so far. So let's make yours look a lot like mine. And let's start by changing the colors. So on this bottom bar, you'll notice a bunch of different colors. And if I click on any of those, it's changing the color that's filled in on the inside. And they call that the fill. I actually don't want there to be any fill because this is the outer border of this keychain fob that we're making. So I'm going to click this little X, which actually gets rid of any of the fill. And then I'm going to hold shift to change the stroke color. Now the stroke is just the border color, and in some software it actually they actually call it a border. And I'll just make it red. And then to fix the whole rounding thing, when you have the rectangle tool activated, and you'll notice that it's highlighted, and my little cursor actually has a rectangle on it. In the top corner, you, there will be a circle, top right corner, and you can just click and drag that to round over the corners. Now before we do that, and we, we're actually going to come back to this, let's mash escape a bunch of times to get back to the select tool. The select tool is the one on the top, and so you can also do get to it by pressing F1, or by just clicking on it up here. And then I'm going to select the border of my object. You have to click the border if it's not filled in. Otherwise, it won't highlight anything. So just keep that in mind. You always want to shoot for clicking the border of things you're trying to select. On the top bar now, there are a bunch of numbers. That X and Y are where it's positioned on the page, with the bottom left corner being 0, 0. Uh, the W is the width of whatever you've selected, and H is the height of whatever you've selected. Now yours will probably say PX over here, and these are the units that all those numbers are in. Right now mine is in millimeters. I'm actually going to change that to inches. I'm just more familiar with inches, but you know if you prefer millimeters, that's totally fine. Or centimeters. I wouldn't recommend pixels, uh, just because most people don't know how many pixels wide their pocket is. Uh, but if you happen to know that, you're pretty weird, um, but good on you. Okay, so I'm going to change the width to 2 inches, so I'll just type in 2 and press enter, and the height to 1 inch. Now on yours, this may have messed up the rounding, like the rounding of the corners might look funny, so we need to go back to that rectangle tool to get the right kind of handles. So we can do that in a couple of ways. I can actually just click on the rectangle tool, and now it's back. Um, let's go back to select, or I can click on the border several times, and it'll also pull up the rectangle tool. That's just a little trick. You can always just click on something multiple times, and it'll pull up the tool that's associated with that kind of object, whether that's a path, whether that's a rectangle, an ellipse, uh, or any sort of thing like that, text, so on. All right, so let's get this where I want it to be. I don't know. That looks pretty good to me. Now let's add a circle. So you can probably guess which one of these tools on the left-hand side is the circle tool. So I'll click that. And just like with the rectangle, I'll click and drag. Now that doesn't look like a circle uh, in any shape or any meaning of the word. At the top, you'll notice it has RX, RY, which are both radii. Start, and that's the starting angle. We want that to be 0. And then an end. I want that to be 360, because I want this to be a complete circle. And now it's starting to look right. You can also switch between a closed segment and a, an open segment, but that only matters if you are doing something that is not 360 degrees. So if it was 120, 
and I change this to open. Now it, those two lines that connect it to the center are gone. Again, doesn't matter for us. So I'm going to change this back to 360, and we've got a circle. So I'm going to go back to the Select tool by mashing Escaped and just click on the circle, which, yes, I know, it's not really a circle right now. Uh, let's change that. So I'm going to change the width to 0.125 inches and the height to 0.125 inches. Make sure you press Enter after you do all of those things, because if you don't press Enter, what's going to happen is that it's not going to change the thing. Okay, so now I've got a circle, uh, and it's the same color as the rectangle is. I actually want it to be a different color. Whenever you're doing laser design, you really want to have each feature be a different color so that you can tell the laser what order to do your features in. That only really matters for the outside border. You always want the outside border to cut last. Now, if you're making something like a coaster with your cat's picture on it, doesn't matter at all. Like, don't worry about that. Uh, but if you're making something that has to fit together, you really should pay close attention to this. So I'm going to go ahead and change the fill on this bottom bar, just holding shift and clicking on one of the colors. So now I change that to black. And with the select tool active, I'm just going to grab the border and just place it wherever I kind of want it to be. There are ways to exactly place this on a page, but we're not going to worry about that right now. This is kind of an intro. This is your first project. Don't worry too much about proper alignment. We'll cover that in another video. All right, so we got the circle. Uh, we've got the rectangle. Why don't we add some text? And you can probably guess which of these things is the text tool. It's the one that has text in it. So I'm going to click on it. And unlike the circle and the rectangle, I'm not going to click and drag to create a text box. I'm instead just going to click, which will give me this blinking cursor. And I'm just going to type in whatever I want to be on there. I'll do my Instagram handle and the podcast that I do with a friend of mine. Obviously, this is huge, and that's not what we want. Also, the font is just not, not exciting enough. So we're going to click on this on the top bar. By the way, when you first do this, it shows you only a few, but if you close it and open it back up, for some reason it shows you a whole bunch. Don't ask me why. That's, it's just something that they do. So let's click on Comic Sans, everybody's favorite font. And you can do all kinds of stuff here. You can adjust the point size, like I want that to be a little bit smaller. Um, I may even want it a little smaller than that. You can adjust like whether it's aligned or how it's aligned, whether it's bold, italic, or normal. Um, not all fonts are going to have all of those, but this one does. And I'm going to go back to the Select tool to move it onto the page. To me, this does not really look dynamic enough or interesting enough, especially for Comic Sans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Select tool. You'll notice I have these kind of stretchy handles. I'm going to click it once more, which gives me these rotate -y kinds of handles. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit and just kind of place it wherever I want it. Maybe something like that. We'll click on it again. But however you want to do this is totally fine. It doesn't really matter terribly much. It's your keychain fob. Make it look how you want it to look. If you want to use a less serious or a more serious font, totally fine. All right. Uh, there is one thing that we need to do to text. Now, at the moment, it is stored as text. So I can still edit it. I can type. I can do all kinds of stuff like that to it. Uh, but most laser softwares don't know what to do with that. Uh, they need collections of points and how those points are connected. So we have to change it into a different form. And the way we do that is by selecting it with the Select tool, clicking on Path, and select Object to Path, not Stroke to Path. Please don't click Stroke to Path. Just trust me on this. It has its uses, but not here. And when you do that, it'll kind of look like nothing has changed. But let's try that trick where you click on things a bunch to activate the tool that was used to create it, and it is not bringing up the text tool. Instead, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It's creating all these little nodes, and you can see that this Edit Paths by Nodes tool is active, which means this is no longer text. I can't edit it as text. It is just paths. 
Okay, so let's go back to the the select tool. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem here in that all this text is now the same color as my circle. So I'll click and drag to create a selection box, but it got that circle in it. So I'm going to hold shift to deselect that circle and click on it to deselect that circle. And now let's change this to, I don't know, we'll make it a nice horrendous shade of green. Am I good with everybody? Good. I'm glad to hear it. Okay. Last thing is let's add some sort of thing over here, some sort of image, shape, something like that. The way I recommend you do this is by going to Google and doing an image search for things that are in black and white. Photographs don't typically work very well. You want to look for things that have really bold lines, things like logos. I'm actually going to use the logo for Decatur Makers, which is the makerspace that I am a, the manager of. So I'm going to click on Import under the File menu, and let's see if we can find something uh, to put on here. I don't know why I went to Receipts. That's not the right place. Designs. DM logo colored. We'll do that one. Now, if you're like me, it's going to come in at totally the wrong size. So I'm going to scroll out just a little bit using control in the scroll wheel. Really recommend using a mouse for this. And if I just grab these stretchy handles with the select tool, you'll notice that I can kind of skew things, which is not generally what I want to do. So I'm going to click control Z to undo. And in between this W and H on the top bar, there's an infinitesimally small padlock. And if you click that, it'll lock the aspect ratio so that now it scales proportionally. So now we can just scale it and put it in place. Set it over here. Something like that. That looks good to me. The other option, if we didn't want to do this, is that if you hold control, it also scales proportionally. So you don't necessarily have to go and click stuff. If you prefer to work with the keyboard, uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and save. And now we get to send it to the laser software, whichever laser software that you use.